Hello, let's take a look at your MT8 LT6 seminar. Um, first thing I want you to do is do the first five questions. We'll go over those in class, and if you're ahead or behind, get those done just so you can activate your prior knowledge. What we're going to do today is we're going to finish up looking at similar shapes, and we're going to look at different parts. And if shapes are similar, we have a whole bunch of different parts that are also proportional besides just the sides. And we're going to look at one special theorem. First thing, if you have a similar triangles, or similar shapes, I should say, we know the altitudes are proportional. We could have done that yesterday on that deck problem. We also know that the angle bisectors are proportional. Now, the angles themselves aren't proportional. We're talking about the lengths are proportional. And we know the medians are proportional. Pretty much every segment that we can think of is going to be proportional. And then the last one is kind of an interesting one. If I have an angle bisector in a triangle, it's going to split that opposite side into a proportional as the length of the other two sides. So if we take a look here at the theorem, we listed out BP is to CP as BA is to CA. Looking at it in color, you can see orange goes to orange as green goes to green. We'll start with our first problem here. I want to find the value of x. And notice these are medians. And our triangles are similar, so I know my medians are proportional. And I could just write, I could find the length here. This would be, tw this would be 24. And this would be 2x. But you're going you're gonna to reduce that anyway. So I'm just going to say, uh, 12 is to x, so I like to put the x in the numerator, so x is to 12. x is to 12 as 18 is to 27. And the first thing I notice to make my life simpler, I can divide by 9, so I have smaller numbers to work with. So then we get x is to 12. 18 divided by 9 is 3 or 2, 27 divided by 9 is 3. Then if I look at equivalent fractions, if I take 3 times 4, I'll get 12, won't I? So what's 2 times 4? Well, that's 8. So x equals 8. Just a different way of looking at it. Yes, you can cross multiply if that suits you. Let's take a look at Another problem here. Here's a design question. I've got a digital camera projects an image through its lens onto a sensor. What's converted into a digital image? The distance between the camera's lens and sensor is known as the focal length and is adjusted depending on the size of the object being photographed and the distance from the camera. Focal length is kind of like your altitude. Not kind of like it is the altitude. Mrs. Elgin sets up her camera three meters away from her subject, who is 1.6 meters tall. If the sensor in her camera is 4.8 millimeters tall, what's the focal length? So let's draw this out. So what happens is here is our image. And then here is my camera. So what happens is my image, or the subject, is 1.6 meters tall. And Mrs. Elgin sets up the camera three meters away from the subject. 
And in our camera, we got 4.8 millimeters. Now, I definitely did not draw this to scale. 4.8 millimeters is pretty small. And I want to find my focal length with this F, which is really the altitude here. So then we're going to say F is to 3. Altitude is to altitude as 4.8 is to 1.6. Remember my focal length is to be in millimeters. So on this one, um, I got decimals here. I'm just going to multiply both sides by 3. So we're going to take 4.8 times 3 and divide by 1.6. We do that, we'll get 9. So we're going to say the focal length is 9 millimeters. Don't forget your units, because that would, that's important. 